No one needs to be reminded that John Lennon was a gifted composer and major influence on the music and pop culture of the last half of the 20th century. John Lennon and Paul McCartney are credited with writing over 180 songs as the primary composers with the Beatles. And as a solo artist, John Lennon had two number one hits in the United States. So it would seem surprising for us to learn that John Lennon was accused of stealing a song from another artist, and under unusual circumstances. Enter Frank Zappa. Zappa was an artist who also wrote music, but in general, really didn't care what people thought of him, his songs, or if his compositions made him big bucks. Some believe that this attitude was especially alluring to John, who was always in the public eye, reported to have a rough exterior, stinging wit, and brutal comments about others in the rock and roll field. But he seemed to care quite a bit about what critics and the public may have thought about him. He sometimes lashed out at artists when the question was posed to him about who he listened to, or who he liked as an artist or songwriter. His comments regarding the musical contributions of his bandmates Paul McCartney and George Harrison are well documented. In 1980, Lennon explained in an interview, A part of me would like to be accepted by all facets of society, and not be this loud-mouthed lunatic poet musician. But I cannot be what I am not. I was the one who all the other boys' parents, including Paul's father, would say, keep away from him. The parents instinctively recognized I was a troublemaker, meaning I did not conform and I would influence their children, which I did. I did my best to disrupt every friend's home, partly out of envy that I didn't have this so-called home. Paul McCartney said in 2021 on Howard Stern that John's early home life was extremely difficult and that John's father left the family when Lennon was just three years old. John once admitted to McCartney this event did have a lasting effect on him. Paul said it wasn't until much later that he realized how racked with insecurities Lennon was, and he pointed to the song Help and mentioned the lyrics of the song, including, But now these days are gone. I'm not so self-assured. Zappa tells this story about meeting John for the first time in a 1984 limited edition picture disc interview. A journalist knocked on my door at um, a hotel called One Fifth Avenue at about two o'clock in the afternoon on the day of that uh, show, and he was he was waiting there at the door. This man writes for the Village Voice. He was waiting there at the door with a tape recorder in his hand, and you know I just crawled out of bed, my hair sticking out all over the place, and you know my eyes were twirling like that. Two o'clock in the afternoon is very early to wake up if you played two shows in a night. And he says, hi, Frank, I'd like to introduce you to John Lennon. And he was, you know, sticking the mic at me like, oh, I'm going to go eek or something like that. So I said, okay, come in. And the first thing he said to me is, you're not as ugly as I thought you'd be. We talked for a few minutes, and I asked him whether he wanted to play with us at the uh, concert at the Fillmore East that night, and he did. And we just happened to have a recording truck there because we were recording the shows for another purpose, and the tapes were made. Zappa recalled that the crowd was shocked and excited to see the arrival of John and his wife Yoko Ono, and that many people marveled at how well they blended with Zappa and the mothers. They played on four tracks that night, and Zappa shared the tracks with John. One song was a tune by Zappa called King Kong, written in 1967. Now here's the bad part. During the performance when Lennon was on stage with Yoko, we played one of my songs called King Kong. And the deal that was made, according to uh, the usage of the tapes, was he got to use the tapes for his purpose, I got to use the tapes for my purpose. He released part of that performance on an album called Sometime in New York and changed the name of the song King Kong to Jam Rag and gave himself and Yoko writing and publishing credit on the song. Now, obviously, this song has a melody and chord changes. Somebody did write it, and it was not them. So, whoops. Zappa criticized the presentation of the mother's performance on Sometime in New York City, as the original vocals had been removed, and Zappa did not receive writing credit for King Kong, which was renamed on this release as Jam Rag, and most importantly, writing and publishing credits going to John and Yoko. Fans have wondered if John was jealous of Zappa, threatened by Zappa, or if it was just all a mistake. 
It is plausible that John and Yoko had no involvement in the misinformation of the song copyright being claimed, as publishers and sometimes agents had the ability to act in this capacity on an artist's behalf. But you'd think Lennon would have responded to Zappa's inquiries. On the Beatle Bible website, the song Jam Rag is shown as written by Frank Zappa, credited to Lennon Ono. Since John died in 1980, Frank passed away in 1993, and Yoko Ono has not commented publicly on the issue. Perhaps it's a moot point. It was said later that Frank Zappa decided not to sue Lennon, since he really didn't care for the recording on some time in New York City, and he was more than anything perplexed by the ordeal. This appears to be the only John Lennon composition that was falsely claimed to be a John Lennon original, or more precisely, a John and Yoko song that someone else wrote. The question that comes up is simply, why would Lennon and Ono take credit for the song in the first place? Zappa's interview concluded with the simple comment, it's a little bit disappointing. 